Hello everybody, this is AJ the Candle Chef and welcome to the first edited video for the Candle Chef Masterclass. In today's Masterclass we will be showing you how to make soy drink candles with whip in bulk. I will be giving you the updated recipe for the colada candles, giving you the important information on supplies and where to get them, giving you color guides for dyes, and showing you how to assembly line your bases and whip. If you are serious about candle making and want to start making a lot of inventory to sell at markets, this is the perfect class for you. I have attached the files you need for this class to the Patreon post so you can download and print out. I would suggest replacing your recipes and color charts in your recipe books if you have them and or start a new masterclass binder and keep organized since I will be doing a masterclass video on all of the candles that I make plus some new ones. Throughout this video I'll be showing this recipe and showing you how I set up my candle lab to be able to do the colada candles in bulk to sell at my markets and wholesale. The first supply you need to get is your vessels. For my colada candles I use a 15 ounce daiquiri glass from thecandleshef.com. They are $33 a case which includes shipping. They are tempered glass which can withstand up to 650 degrees and recommended lit candle temp for the glass should be around 140 to 180 degrees depending on the part of the candle is burning. To fill a six foot table you'll need at least six cases of glasses. You can also get three tier display stands on the candleshaft.com as well so you can display them at your market and then what I normally do is I will set out a drink candle out in front without the shrink wrap so then the customers can smell the fragrances of each candle. When you first open your cases of glasses, you'll need to take off the manufacturer's sticker and place your candle warning stickers. I get my stickers from Amazon. They're fairly cheap and easy to get. You'll want to inspect your glasses to make sure that there is no dust or debris in or on the glasses and clean with the glass cleaner if needed. Next, on a table that is level, lay out your glasses to prep them for wicking. You'll want to lay out at least six cases of glasses so that you can pour all the the bases at once. Once you get to the point of selling a lot of candles either at your market or online you can add more cases. The wicks that we're going to be using is an LX series wick size 20. You can get these wicks at candlescience.com or various candle suppliers. LX wicks are an all-purpose wick generally good for most waxes and is flat braided cotton wick with a rigid structure. They are also known for burning with a tighter controlled flame minimizing issues like carbon buildup, smoking, and afterglow. If you have never made these candles before, you'll want to do your own wick testing to make sure you have a wick that you like and prefer for your product. To wick test these, set aside eight glasses just for testing and wick your test glasses with LX20, Eco14, and 16, CD18 and 20, and HTP126. Those are the recommended wicks that I suggest you start your wick test with. These are all comparable wicks to the LX20. Refer to the wick guide chart that I attached to the video post in Patreon for more info and wick choices. The first thing that you'll need to do is prepare your soy wax. I currently have a digipoil but this is not the only way you can melt your wax. You can also use four pound pots on your stove using the double boiler method shown here. Another way is to use direct heat on a burner or a pancake griddle. There are all kinds of soy wax you can use for your drink candles but I have found that the high melt point and oil content wax is better for both the base and the whip. You can go to thecandlechef.com to get the dream soy wax that I use here which has low to zero frosting and excellent glass adhesion. Blended waxes that contain paraffin and coconut wax shrink too much for the glass containers and pulls away from the glass creating wet spots. Here I'm filling up my digifoil and setting the temperature to 185 degrees. Next up is measuring your wax and fragrance. I use a four pound pot from candlewick.com and get a pot for all the different kinds of drink candles I do. Then I label them so they are dedicated just for that wax and fragrance. This cuts down on labor and cleaning out pots and makes it possible for you to keep filling it up with wax and fragrance for that type of candle. If you have leftover wax, you can heat it back up 
on a pancake griddle to about 185 degrees, then add more wax and fragrance. First, put your pot on your scale and zero it out so you only weigh the wax. Fill up your pot with your dream soy or equivalent wax. You will be needing 9.5 ounces per candle of wax. The breakdown is 8% of the wax weight is in fragrance. So you'll need approximately 8.75 ounces of wax and 0.75 ounces of fragrance per candle. To make this easy, all you have to do is weigh out your wax and then times it by 0.08, which is 8%, and you'll get the amount of the fragrance you'll need for your wax. Zero out your scale and then add your fragrance. The fragrances I use for my drink candles are from our sponsor, Stay Fresh with Peanut. I have sampled most of all their fragrances and I absolutely love them. My other suppliers for fragrances when they don't have what I need, like Mango Paradise, is candlemaking.com, which is Aztec. They have a wide selection of food fragrances. The six different kinds that I make are Pina Colada, Strawberry Daiquiri, Mango Paradise, Blue Hawaiian, Hawaiian Butter, and the new half and half style peachy rings. On the Hawaiian butter, I actually don't use Hawaiian butter fragrance anymore. I actually use the fragrance Jamaican Me Crazy and, and I absolutely love it. On all the drinks except for strawberry daiquiri, I do the 8% and then on the strawberry daiquiri, I do 4% strawberry and 4% pina colada. I like that combination a little bit better. I encourage you guys to experiment with different colors and fragrances and if you have suppliers near you where you can pick them up, you can really save a lot of shipping for your supplies. If you are in a different country and these supplies that I mentioned in the video are not available in your area, you can look up the Candle Chef on Patreon and send me a message and I will look for an alternate solution for you for dyes, fragrances, or waxes. For the coloring, I like to do 68 drops for the bases and then one drop for the whip. I do four pound pots for the base and two pound pots for the whip. Here's a chart to get you started on the amount of dyes to use for each drink candle. Because it's pretty messy pouring from the pot, I use 16 ounce deli containers to pour my wax. It's easier to control and less mess. I get these deli containers at webrestaurantstore.com. To make it easy for pouring each glass when you first get started, you can take a marker and mark 9.5 ounces in the deli cup and pour that exact amount in each glass. Once you get familiar with the height to pour at, you won't need that. What I like to do is keep about an inch and a half room at the top for the whip. You don't need much room, but enough room where you don't over whip past the rim later. After you pour your bases from your pot, place your wick holders to keep the wick centered. I use popsicle sticks with holes in them from Amazon because they're very inexpensive. You can also use plastic centering devices that you can put on your glasses as well. For the peachy rings and the half and half look, Get six by six by six boxes from either Uline or another box shop and put your glass from corner to corner. Pour your wax into your glass until it reaches about an inch and a half from the top, being careful not to spill and then let it cool. Next up is getting the in-bed decorations ready. Here is a chart that will tell you the dyes you need for rich deep colors in your decoration. You can use any pillar candle wax for your embeds, which is a combination of paraffin and soy blended together. Or you can use the two brands that I prefer, which are 6028 from Candle Science or Pillar of Bliss from Nature's Garden. I don't use any fragrance in my decorations, but if you would like, the percent I re recommend. The percent that I recommend is 6 to 8% in each of these preferred waxes. Heat your wax to at least 165 degrees, and if you are having trouble with holes or pitting, you can heat hotter to about 185 to 195 to get a smoother finish. Pour 25 ounces of your wax into a two pound pot and mix your dye into your wax. I like to use a 16 ounce container to pour in my embeds. You have better control over the stream and less mess. Another way to avoid a mess is to use a cookie sheet for your mold so it catches any wax spilling over. I don't like to overfill the cavities so I actually use a dough cutter 
Right after I pour to scrape off any excess wax on the silicone mold. Pour your cavities and wait at least 45 minutes to an hour, sometimes through two hours for more difficult embeds before demolding. I use sandwich containers from webrestaurantstore.com uh, to store my embeds. If you are working around sunlight or UV lights, it may be a good idea for you to get UV inhibitor for your uh, bananas and anything that you don't have dye in from flamingcandle.com. Usage for the UV inhibitor is one to two grams per 100 grams of wax. For silicone molds, if you're looking to do the different kinds of drinks that I do with the same decorations, you will need these silicone molds from thecandleshaft.com. You can get all the silicone molds that I use from thecandleshaft.com, except for the leaves. You can get those either on Etsy or Timu. Here's what each decoration embed should look like when you are finished. When you pour the rest of your peachy rings, all you have to do is get your glass out of the box after it completely cools and then make up your peachy ring yellow base. Pour till you get to the top of the orange. You will need plenty of room for the whip and decorations at the top, so plan for that. Once you have all your bases poured, now it's time for the whip. To make it easier to pipe, clip all your wicks to the top of the rim. Don't cut it too short. You can always cut off more later. After about two hours your bases will be cooled and ready to be piped. Here I will show you how to set up all your piping supplies in order to continually pipe in an assembly line like fashion. The supplies you'll need are as follows. You'll need a separate two pound pot for every 12 candles that you want to do. So if you want to do 24 candles of each kind, you will need two pots for every kind like I show here. You can get the pots at candlewick.com for pretty cheap. Please note that the website says one pound pots, but there are actually two pound pots. Next you will need your 18 inch piping bags from webrestaurantstore.com and to make things easier roughly the same amount of piping tips as you have pots so you don't have to keep cleaning as you go the tip that I use is an M1 large open star tip the dyes that you'll need are liquid dyes from sozo essentials and candlewick.com you can experiment with other dyes from other companies but these two companies I have found have the most realistic colors for food candles candles. The next step is to prepare your whipping wax. Take a two pound pot and place on your scale and zero out the scale so you only get the wax weight. Use and pour a high oil content soy wax like dream soy on thecandleshaft.com for your whipping wax. Temperature doesn't really matter this time because you will be letting it cool to whip anyway. As long as it's above 135 degrees, you're good to go. Pour approximately 16 ounces of wax in your two pound pot. Each each whipped cream dollop is about 1.5 ounces of wax, so you will be able to do 12 candles if you calculate and pipe correctly. Here are the dye drops to use for each of the candles that I use. I used to use white whip until I started noticing the embeds bleed colors into the white whip after a while, so I now color my whip to hide the bleeding. I only use about one to two drops of dye per pot for a nice pastel color. Next, calculate your wax weight by 0 0.08 which is 8% and add your fragrance and mix. It takes approximately 2 hours for it to cool down to around 90 to 95 degrees. To speed up the progress you can put it into the fridge for about 30 to 45 minutes. There are three different ways you can cool down your wax to 90 degrees to prep it for whip. First way is you can prepare the wax a day ahead of time like I do and put it on a shelf to cool down overnight and then you can whip the following day. Or you can wait the two hours till it's around 90 degrees, or you can put into the fridge to cool it down even faster. If you prep your pots the day before, then you will need to add heat from your heat gun for about 30 seconds on high to be able to whip and get it creamy. If you do it the same day, and wait until it cools down, then you will need the wax to be a semi-solid, mushy state that resembles dry mashed potatoes before whipping. The reason I like to prep the day before is because I do two cases of each kinds of candles at all at once. I need all my pots ready to go so I can assembly line my whipping. I make up two pots per kind. I have six different kinds, so I usually make up 12 pots and then let them sit overnight on a shelf. 
when letting the wax cool completely in this method when it comes time to whip you'll need to use the heat gun on high for about 30 seconds before whipping now that we have some melted wax on top from the heat gun we can force our electric hand mixer into the cold wax and whip on high for about two to three minutes until it's creamy if it's too thin you'll need to let it sit for a bit if it's too thick you'll need to hit it with the heat gun again for about 30 seconds the only way that you'll know if it's the right consistency is by practice the more you whip and get to know the different textures the more you will know when the whip is ready typically i whip the wax until it doesn't jiggle in the pot. Next just spoon the wax into your 6 inch piping bag and your M1 piping tip and you are ready to pipe. After I spoon it into the bag I put the pot on a pancake griddle to heat it up so it's ready to be prepped again for another round. Go ahead and prep your pot by putting half a pot of wax, one drop of dye, and a splash of fragrance and mix it. Then put it back on the shelf so it's ready to go for your next time you need it. I like to clip my wicks to the top of the rim of the glass before I start whipping so they are ready to go before I start piping. While you clip the wicks, it's also a good idea to clean off the drips of wax on the glass before you pipe because it's harder to clean after you pipe. When piping, you want to have the tip about a half an inch from where you want to pipe. Apply enough pressure to have a nice size whipped cream dollop, but not too much pressure to the point where the dollop touches the glass. I like the whipped cream to almost touch the glass, but not touch the glass. This is because if it touches the glass, it vibrates in shipping and doesn't look as good when it arrives to the customer. If you have 9.5 ounces on the base, then you'll have room to do two circles of whip as you see here. I do two circles of whip and then put the decoration where I end up on the circles. After you complete your 12 dollops, put the remaining whip back into the pot, get some pliers to pull out the tip, and throw away or recycle your piping bag. I put the tip into a 5 inch pie tin so I can clean it pretty fast with a heat gun. You don't have to clean out your pot, you can just fill up halfway, put a splash of fragrance and a drop of dye in there to mix in, and then mix with a spoon and put back on the shelf to cool for your next time. So since I have all my pots already ready and made up the previous day, I can just go to the next pot, heat with the heat gun, and whip with the electric mixer, and then pipe the next 12 candles. This is how I'm able to assembly line a lot of candles at once, and have inventory for not only my market on the weekends, but also to sell by the case to potential wholesale accounts with various businesses around town. You can decorate with a lot of different kinds of embeds. If you would like to make the embeds that I make for decorations, here is a chart of the dyes you will need to do the embeds with the colors I show here. If you'd like to learn more about ordering supplies, calculating your cogs, pricing your candles, displays, and how to even sell your candles, I have a dessert candle school on my Patreon where I do live classes, recorded video classes, one-on-one -on -one coachings, recipes, and much more. For those of you who are already a Patreon member, I want to give a heartfelt thank you for making all this possible. Your support has helped me educate thousands of up-and-coming candle makers on the art of making beautiful dessert candles. The next masterclass will be on the popular cereal candles where I'll show you how to make the cereal embeds and various kinds of cereal candles. The next master classes will be shown exclusively on my Patreon for Dessert Candle members, so come check out The Candle Chef on Patreon. My name is AJ The Candle Chef, and I'll see you in the next class.